profound knowledge, understanding a system. William Edwards Deming was an American statistician who is best known perhaps for his work on continual improvement. Deming advocated that managers needed to have what he called a system of profound knowledge. This included an appreciation of a system, knowledge of variation, theory of knowledge, and knowledge of psychology. Let's start by allowing Dr. Bachman to teach us exactly what a system is. Hello, Ramon. What we're going to do is talk today about systems. What is a system? But before we answer that, let me show you two systems. This is the first one. What it does is you take this little dewdropper back here. Little mouse comes by, and wow, caught the mouse. That's one system. Here's another system. Caught the mouse. All right, as we talk about these two systems, what is it about them that we can look at and say, what is the system? What is the system of this and what is the system of that? All systems have an aim. The aim of this, catch the mouse. The aim of this, catch the mouse. All systems have aims. All systems are made up of processes, steps by which the aim is accomplished. With this, it's pulling back the dew jobber, mouse comes in, and whack. With this system, we have a much more elaborate thing. This looks a lot more like healthcare. Lots of different steps to get to your objective. So systems have an aim, systems have processes. The other thing is that if you take a look at the system, it should all try to work together, but in more complex systems, they do not. You actually have competition going on within a system. Things are actually counterproductive. You have competition within the system. Whenever you have competition, you have troubles with meeting your aim. Let me give you an example. Suppose a pharmacy finds that they can get the price of their drug down five cents a prescription. Well, the pharmacy would say, well, let's drop that. At the same time, the whole system may not benefit because by implementing that change in cost, another drug is used, doctors have to rewrite prescriptions, patients have to get new prescriptions. What may very well happen is the whole system fails. A good way of knowing whether a system will work or not is would a department actually take a loss for the whole system to be successful? The other thing is that if you take a look at the complex systems or the complex processes within a system, one finds that you're dealing with, with people who use common sense. Every step along the way makes sense to the people that are doing it. It makes sense. And yet the whole is sometimes uh, in trouble as a result of people using common sense. So consequently, when you're in the system, common sense does not necessarily improve things. Just because you think it might be right doesn't mean the whole system would be benefiting by your common sense. So common sense goes out the door when you're in the system. You need a different way of looking at things. A system has boundaries. There's a limitation to how far the system extends. And this is just around the board or around the mousetrap. Healthcare obviously is a lot more complex. It may be within the clinic, or is it? Does it not also include the patients? Does not it also include the suppliers? So systems can have a boundary, but it can be quite large, all interfering with how things work. So in conclusion, all systems have an aim. All systems are made up of processes. When you're within the system, if you use common sense and just look at the things around you, you might actually cause damage to the entire system. So common sense may not work. Competition in a system is bad. Cooperation is what's needed. And finally, all systems have boundaries.
If you can remember those essential things, you are on your way of learning about Deming's profound knowledge, at least in regard to systems. And so a system has a name, is made up of processes, may not be improved by common sense. A system works when there is cooperation rather than competition. And a system has boundaries. I want you to identify a system. What is the aim? Does the aim make sense? Is the work being done promoting the accomplishment of this aim? Dr. Bachman talked about competition and cooperation. How do people compete or get in each other's way to accomplish an aim at your workplace? And finally, can you discuss a process that is being done by common sense or past experience? that is actually counterproductive? Dr. Deming's theory of profound knowledge has four parts. In the next video, we'll discuss variation.